Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this time to formally welcome you to Forest Lawn Cypress for the celebration of life. Before we begin our service, I would like to kindly ask if we can please put our cell phones on silent out of respect for the family. And leading us in this service will be Mr. Randy Hill. As we continue our time together, I would like to take a very brief moment just simply introducing myself. My name is Randy Hill and I'm a local counselor and also minister over in Huntington Beach. And in the moments that we're about to share, I really wanted to begin by saying a couple of things. First of all, to the family. Dorothy, Rocky, Wendy, from all of us. We just want to say how sorry we are for your loss. And also, I want everyone to know as they know that my simple intention in the service, it's really trying to be a source of comfort and encouragement. And so to that end, we'll ask our good Lord to help us. And we have a very special focus we're going to be walking in the direction of doing three things. Remembering, honoring, celebrating Terry's life. And I know that you've gathered to do so as well. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about the service and how it will unfold. In a few moments, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. I put together a little message of comfort, especially for the family. And then we come to what I think is the highlight of the service. And that's an opportunity for anyone who might want to share with us a thought, a feeling, a memory, as it relates to your relationship with Terry. Then we have a beautiful poem we're going to read. And then a final blessing. And then our good director will return to transition us over to the committal site for final blessings. But I wanted to take this moment and read into our hearts these two passages of Scripture. And we went back into the Old Testament and selected first these words from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. For to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. There's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to reap that which is planted, a time to release, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. There's a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away. A time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. Now the other passage is that deeply familiar and very, very comforting 23rd Psalm. And, and actually on the back of your memorial folder, the 23rd Psalm is printed there. So if you would like to join in with me at any point, Feel free to do so because it really is a touching, comfortable passage. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness 
for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my very life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you so much. That really sounded very good, the 23rd Psalm. And now I'm privileged to take a few moments and talk to you about three words that I mentioned earlier that are very important to this moment. And what I would like to request is that you receive these three simple words, plant them into your hearts, into your minds, and may they serve to bring us back to this moment, what could even be years from now. And all three of these words as it relates to your relationship with Terry. So the first word is the word remember. Or maybe another way of looking at it would be to use the word re-embrace. Or even recall. I just want you to remember, re-embrace, or recall Terry. And how long do I want you to really do this? I want you to commit to remembering him for as long as you have life. Remembering everything about him. Remembering what moved him to laughter through the years. What moved him to tears. Remember his story. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And remember the many lives as he's touched. No doubt all lives present here today can testify to that reality. And actually, what I'd like to do at this time, as his mom, Dorothy, was very, very precious to me and helpful to me as well in putting together some beautiful words to share, and I'm honored to share a summary of what she and I talked about. Terry was born on November the 21st, 1955, not far from here in Hawthorne, California. I ask mom to give me some words that would best describe Terry. Are you ready for these? These are precious. She said, Randy, he was a gift from heaven. And speaking of heaven, Terry had faith in God, and that sustained him along with family. He was very loving and a wonderful young man. She credits him as being very smart and very polite. He and his brother Rocky were both in scouts, and their dad was a scout master. And those days were good days. Life simply was special during this time. But as you all know, at age 17, Terry was body surfing in Los Angeles County. I believe it was near Marina Del Rey when a horrible accident happened and he was paralyzed. This changed the way life was planned. His father had already passed on, and the accident would take a toll, to say the least, on the family. Terry was strong, and he volunteered his time to help others at the local hospital. He was known and appreciated by many. He was named the California Volunteer of the Year and recognized for his spirit and service at a ceremony held at the, I believe it was the Beverly Hill Hilton. 
When asked what she would miss the most about her son, mom said several things. She said, Randy, pre-accident, the family would take trips back to Nebraska for family reunions, and this was very meaningful to them. They also took trips to Michigan as well. Dorothy said she made a promise to Terry. The promise was to keep him home. And she kept that promise. And in keeping that promise, they spent a lot of time together. They even would watch TV sometimes till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. They would enjoy that. She misses his presence. She misses their time together at home. The last four years, Terry lived with various changing medical issues. Last year specifically was not a good year for him. To Dorothy, to Rocky, to Wendy, I want to say that you all delivered a lot of hope to Terry. Let me explain what hope is in my mind. Hope is not always about changing things. Sometimes it is. Sometimes we can change things and therefore we implement hope. But sometimes things just can't be changed. But what can happen is a difference can be made. And that's what you guys did. You made a difference in his heart and in his life. You delivered a lot of hope. You made the differences that mattered. And God bless all of you for your dedication to his life. Dorothy, I don't know if you remember saying this to me, but you said on the phone, Randy, God has helped us. To be there for him. And it was so true. And you guys were so visible. And available. To him. This. Which I just read to you. Is what I mean exactly. By remembering him. The second word. Is the word honor. Now I watched. As we arrived here today. We made our way. Into this moment to be visible and available to one another, but for the purpose of honoring Terry for many, many things. His outlook on life, even facing what he was facing, his perspective, his faith, what he believed in. Today we recognize his goodness and his uniqueness and his love of family. And the special gifts as a volunteer that he shared so generously with others. You see, while the family was making a difference into his life, he was making a difference into others' lives as well. And that's to be remembered. Remembering him is vital. Honoring him is essential. And the third word that I want to mention at the moment in my mind, is the greater of the three. And that word is celebration. Now, I know this is a very, very difficult time for the family. But having said that, I want to go on and say this. I really believe we are here today, not so much because Terry passed, but because he lived. And it's in the living of his life that he has impacted all who have gathered. He's made a difference in your hearts and lives. And you know, you might make a mistake if you look in this direction and assume that I'm the teacher here today because I'm not. I'm just privileged to be with family as we all are. We have a teacher in our midst. His name is Terry. And what is Terry's lesson to all of us? The lesson is that, like him, we all have a certain amount of time. 
Sometimes that's a lot of time. It can even exceed a hundred years and sometimes not much time at all. But here's what happens to us. We just don't think of it like this. But we're expected into life. We're born into life. We walk through life on a daily basis. And we refer to the time that we have as being our lives. And the only thing we can do with time we have was the only thing Terry could do with the time he had. And that is... Terry had to spend his time. He had to give it away. He could not save or harbor or preserve. It all had to go forward second by second, moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day, just as you're spending your time together right here, right now with family. But here's the blessing. I'm making the full assumption that everyone here and outside has a history of spending time with Terry, some more than others. And it may have been indirect through family. It may have been directly with him. But however it played out, one-on-one, -on -one, group setting, on the telephone, as a volunteer, whenever, wherever, however time was spent with Terry, it really adds up to one thing, a gift of his heart, time, and life being given to you. And that's the gift that escorted you into this moment and we'll walk with you from this moment. And I want to stay in the spirit of remembering, honoring, and celebrating his life. Because this is the highlight of the service. The opportunity for some to share a thought, feeling, or memory before we move on. So let me ask, anyone today like to take advantage, come up and share a thought, a feeling, a memory? Yes, sir. Come right ahead. I'm so glad I'm behind the plexiglass so you can't throw tomatoes in the water bottles at me. Uh, gonna miss you, T. You know, uh, uh, by the way, it was, it was Doc Weiler Beach. Uh, that's all right. Affe affectionately called Toes Beach for all of us that grew up in Culver City. And uh, yeah, it was not a pleasant day by any stretch of the imagination. But, uh, you know, I enjoyed being with Terry so much when we'd get out. Terry was a putzer, and uh, so was I. So, you know, getting out with Eddie, and uh, John or wherever, and we'd go to Fry's and look at computers, look at stereo equipment, go to dinner, go to a movie. Um, it was all good. And uh, like I told Aunt Dorothy this morning, I said I looked up and I, I said, Terry would have loved this day. Sometimes when I'd go to pick him up, he'd already be in the wheelchair out in the driveway and he'd be just, you know, because he could feel the sky and the sun, which he didn't get to see in his bedroom for so, so long. So, I don't know. I'm going to miss him. I know everybody is. I wish I could have been more there with him, especially near the end. Those last four years were not good. Um, it would have been so nice to get him out of there. Anyway, Terry, you're in a better place. God bless you. And God bless you. Thank you for sharing. Someone else, please, if they want to share. I just don't want to overlook anyone. Okay. Thank you. If I can make it through it. This is hard for me. I know it's hard for his family. I've spent m many hours with Terry. His doctor visits. Like Bob says, going out to dinner, movies, just spending time with him. 
getting food from La Capilla at his house, watching programs, laughing. Uh, I've been blessed and privileged to be able to assist in taking him to his reunions to meet this beautiful family that I feel is one of my own. He was more than a friend. He was my brother. I never looked at Terry as disabled. I just looked at him as the beautiful person he was. All the things that he did, his crossword puzzles, his painting with his mouth, the knowledge he had. Just been blessed to be able to be there for him when I was able to be there for him. He was always on my mind. He will always be my heart. And Terry, I love you. And I know, as my wife put it, right now he's up in heaven. He's running. He's clapping. He's playing. And he's at peace. So I want to just thank the family for including me in all the reunions and family gatherings because they meant the world to me. And I love you all. Thank you. Okay. What I'd like to do at this time is read a little poem. Think of this as being Terry's message back to his family and the overflow to all the hearts that are present here today. The title is Afterglow. And the words are, I'd like the memory of me to be a happy one. I'd like to leave an afterglow of smiles when life is done. I'd like to leave an echo whispering softly down the ways of happy times and laughing times, bright and sunny days. I'd like the tears of those who grieve to dry before the sun, of happy memories that I leave behind when life is done. And may God forever bless his treasured memory to all the hearts that are present. And would you bow with me for a special blessing, please? Our Heavenly Father, on this a beautiful day that you have made, we pause to thank you for a beautiful life well lived. Thank you for Terry. Thank you for his heart, his spirit, his love for family and others. In this moment, we ask that you would embrace them all with your loving care. Grant your spirit to their hearts. And this we pray in your name. And for your sake, amen. Amen. God bless all of you. I'm going to invite our director to come forward and he'll be offering some transitional thoughts. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our first part of the service. In a few moments, starting with those of you in the back, you'll be welcome to come forward so you can pay your final respects. Once you have paid your final respects, you can exit the doors to your left and return to your vehicles. We'll be driving together in procession to the gravesite, so you may all follow the funeral coach. Those of you who have been selected as pallbearers, you can stay by this table over here so you can receive further instructions. And lastly, on behalf of Forest Land, I would like to thank the immediate family for entrusting us with your loved one. Thank you. Starting with those of you in the back, you can come forward at this moment. 